Hey guys, welcome back to Ask HR with Etonam, your channel for authentic HR content. I hope you enjoyed the last video I shared with you. I mentioned in my last video that we've done a couple of videos on inclusion, which talks about interviews, how to help you do well in interviews how to just basically get you through the door and then i mentioned that we'll be doing a couple of videos on what i call influence influence is whilst you are in there how do we even hear your voice are you just going to be lurking in the shadow still you retire and then i said subsequently we'll also be doing some videos on impact that's um making a difference outside of the confines of the organization so in today's video we are going to talk about something big that will affect your influence as an employee wherever you find yourself and that is the place of communication and i mean effective communication in advancing your career so stay with me and let's dive right in now you can attest to the fact that regardless of the position you hold in your organization whether you're the ceo whether you're an entry-level supervisor whatever it is communication is very vital in carrying out your day-to-day -day activities it's very rare to find a job that doesn't require you to communicate especially today when the world of work is changing in the era of digital transformation, artificial intelligence, and other technologies that enable people to work from diverse, dispersed locations, communication skills are even more vital today to be able to help you collaborate work activities and also pull your team together to get the best and the most out of them. Now, when we say effective communication, what do we even mean? You know, there are some people who um, are naturally talkers, you know. I don't mention any <laughs> temperaments, but such people just sometimes they go on talk, 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 talk in a conversation. They call it a conversation. And in my understanding, the conversation is supposed to be a two-way affair, isn't it? But someone is engaging with you and the person just goes on 20 minutes straight and is not picking any cues from the other party verbal non-verbal so long as their voice is being heard they are okay that's not effective communication so when we say effective communication what exactly are we talking about i would say an effective communicator is someone who is engaged in whatever is going on someone who is considerate someone who is actively listening, someone who is open to receive and respond to questions and inquiries whilst the conversation is going on. And then someone who also speaks clearly, boldly, confidently, and graciously. That's what an effective communicator is. So for someone like that, after you've engaged with the person on leaving, you realize that you've been heard and you've also heard what the person has said. If there are, you know, things that need to be clarified, all those clarifications were made. So you don't leave the conversation more confused than you came in, or you left with a lot of things that are ambiguous that weren't very clear to you. So make sure that anytime you are communicating to someone, if you want to be branded an effective communicator, make sure that you are engaged so you are there fully you know you know sometimes you're having a conversation with someone and then you realize that the person is just all over the place at the end of the day the person is not really listening you don't want to be that person so make people know that you are there fully listening to them and you are considerate in that when you are picking on verbal cues like someone wanting to chip in to ask a question while you're still speaking you pause and then request if the person has any questions or the person wants any clarifications things like that 
and then actively listening when the person is also speaking so that it's not just a, a one-way thing now i want to share with you three key communication skills that you would require in the workplace to make influence or to be influential or to get you a seat at the table you know i don't know if you've experienced or you've observe that situation where someone is managing a team right and so if there's any challenge regarding their work they should be speaking to their supervisor but some way somehow the supervisor never gets to know what's going on in his or her team but there's someone else that they'd rather confide in and speak to now when that happens that person becomes a spokesperson for your team and the go-to person for your team. That person is likely to get a seat at the table or to be known to be more resourceful than you are. Maybe your team perceives you as someone who is always absorbed in his work and is not interested in you know, issues that are raised within the team. The first thing I want to talk about is active listening. Practice active listening. You know, Usually when you have something you want to say, you just want to get it out of the way. So you don't really mind what the other person is thinking, whether they require clarification and things like that. You just want to pass the message across. But practice active listening. And what I mean by that is this. Paying close attention to what others are saying and then asking clarifying questions. That demonstrates your interest in what is being said and even if you stretch it, demonstrate your respect for the person. So someone is, is speaking to you and you're just seated there. No cues whatsoever. So the person now has to figure out, hey, what is this person thinking about what I'm saying? Someone would rather have a conversation or confide in people who actively listen to them. So I'm saying, if you're a manager, for instance, you have a team and they don't see you practice active listening trust me there will be so much going on in your team that you have no clue about so you go for this general meeting and there are issues regarding your department someone is well versed or someone someone has more information about what's happening in your department than the head of the department that doesn't really look good on you that won't get you the influence you need to advance your career so make sure that you are practicing active listening the second thing i want to draw your attention to is an awareness of communication styles so you need if you want to advance your career using communication aside active listening you need to be aware and understand what communication styles they are the ones that prevail in your organization and how to deal with those um, different people with their different styles of communication. There are four main types of communication styles. There's the passive communicator. I'm sure you've seen a lot of those people. So they are rather reserved and quieter. It's very difficult for them to, or for you to be able to tell their true feelings and what they are thinking they can act very indifferent or they can be agreeable depending on the situation because they just want to keep things on the peaceful side they don't want to really rock the boat now you're having a conversation with this person you require vital information from this person and then you come with all your passion wanting to communicate and this person is just indifferent and you can get angry or show different kinds of emotions that won't help the situation but if you've observed and understand that this person is a passive communicator then you can understand how to to get the information you want from the person without being worked up or you write the person off and don't get the information that would be to your head so i'm saying that you need to know who those passive communicators are and know how to deal with them the aggressive communicator is the exact opposite of the passive one 
Now, these people are more vocal. They want everybody to know what they are thinking and how they are feeling about things. They can come across as very intimidating and sometimes almost abusive. Now, if you want information from this person or you need to communicate with this person, you have to also know how to situate your questions and your comments so that you are able to have a peaceful conversation with this person. Aggressive communicators can be very assertive and sometimes people um, consider assertive people to be arrogant. But if you read in between the lines, you just realize that this person is just a different communicator than I am. I need to find a way to work around having a meaningful and fruitful conversation with this person. Let's say you are aiming for a certain position you know to to be promoted right now the one that has influence and is able to facilitate that is an aggressive communicator and anytime you go to the person the person takes you off the wrong way but you need your promotion so how do you contain this person's communication style so that at the end of the day you get what you are looking for then we have the passive aggressive those are the lukewarm people you have no idea what they are thinking how they are feeling they just play along depending on the situation so you have to know someone who is passive aggressive and how to deal with them then we have the assertive communicator the assertive communicator is very expressive very clear in what they want to communicate and unlike the aggressive communicators, they usually consider the feelings and emotions of others and usually communicate with um, respect. So in order to create a sound foundation for mutual understanding in the workplace, make sure that you also know what your communication style is so that you'll be able to adapt to people with other communication styles. The third key skill you require to advance in your workplace in terms of communication is persuasion. Oh, how we all need this skill. In the work environment, what is happening is there's something that has to be achieved and there are people assigned to it. Some people are passionate and will naturally just hit the ground running. Most people are not. You need to rally around the team to get the work done and what you require is influence to persuade people you don't impose things on people in the workplace you persuade and get people to do what you want so persuasion is a key communication skill you require to advance your career to give you that influence so when you find someone who is well versed or has mastery in this skill called persuasion you can see that this person is able to read the audience in the room and they know where everyone is situated you know those people too who can get you to do what they want before you realize that that's not what i wanted to do but they so sell this idea to you that you believe it benefits you more than the person is so you just do it without raising any questions Organizations value people who are able to develop themselves in this skill called persuasion. You require it internally and externally. If you are a salesperson, for instance, imagine the volumes of sale you drive in if you are able to persuade people. So you require the skills for your clients, for your colleagues. Imagine you are even aiming for a promotion. The facts are there. Everything shows that you are next in line for the promotion, but they keep passing you over time and time again. What are you going to do? Are you just going to sit down? Or you are going to use this skill to point out why you are the person qualified for this promotion. So we can't underestimate the fact that you require this skill to be able to advance your career, to gain the influence you require in the workplace now aside these three key skills that i believe you you need to advance in your career there are other 
communication skills that are really helpful in giving you the influence you need in your workplace. One of them is giving feedback and feedback is for betterment and improvement. People will always come to you and talk to you when they realize that they, they leave the conversation with you better than they can. You always give them input about how to do something better. The, you would be the go-to person for advice. Everyone comes to you and the moment that is happening, even if you are not the leader of the team, you become the natural leader and those are the people organizations are looking to keep and to promote. So giving feedback is an essential com skill you require now let me ask you how is your written communication like you know there are some people who are able to speak fluently but let them just get down to writing an email or a memo and it's just an eyesore <laughs> you know it's just terrible the language the construction you know, there's just a huge disparity between their spoken language and their written language. A lot goes into written communication. So what's your communication, your written communication like? Do we find a lot of mistakes in your emails, your memos, etc.? If that is the case, you want to begin to fix that right now because that can put a dent on your person. You know, when people think of it, like, this is this person who writes very horrible emails. You don't want to be that person. Do you make eye contact? What's your posture and body language when you are communicating with people? People are interested in ideas that are communicated with confidence. You know, those moments where you just bought into someone's wild idea and then two days down the line you think about it and you realize that ah, why was i even so enthused about this idea it wasn't because the idea was brilliant it was because the person communicated so boldly you couldn't really come up with any probing questions okay so that's one thing you need communicating confidently if you're a confident communicator anytime we an organization has to do any form of speaking at all on the spur of the moment you'll be the go-to person you'll be the one they'll be looking for you oh where is this person and that's how people are quickly shot into the limelight you can be there for five years ten years nobody hears your voice anyway so you remain where you are but if we are always seeing we are visible because if we, they are looking for that person who is able to communicate confidently you are the go-to person getting a seat at the table won't be a hassle at all so build and work on your confidence as a communicator openness and empathy is also yeah it's part of communication openness and empathy so you need to understand that not everyone will buy into your idea so don't get offended when you you bring your ideas on board and someone has a varying opinion you need to get into the person's shoes the person's emotions to try to understand why does this person have a varying outlook on this issue okay so you try to understand people from where they are someone once said the key to community is acceptance and celebration of other people's cultures now that brings me to this point cross-cultural communication if you're working in a multinational or you're looking to work in one you can't avoid cross-cultural communication because not everyone in the organization comes from where you are coming from there are people from all walks of life with different responses to issues different cultures and all that and what you need is tolerance for them openness to them and respect for them and you will be fine thank you so much for watching today's video i hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot if you practice the things that i shared with you in this video you are holding your lifeline to the influence you so need in your career advancement thank you so much if you've not subscribed yet 
please subscribe like share the video and see you in my next video thank you